welcome to a science episode of the Slingshot Channel. <laughs> I present to you the Slingception. <laughs> you may know the great movie Inception. It's about people that dream inside of a dream. Well, this is a slingshot inside of a slingshot. Let me show you how it works. This here is just a normal slingshot crossbow. It's not very powerful, but that's not the point. It's a scientific experiment. But it slides in another slingshot with an independent set of slingshot bands. And it's buffered in the end because it's going to hit the end with tremendous force. And it's going to bend quite a bit. That's why it can't be overly powerful. But again, that is not the point. It's not a practical weapon. It's an experiment. Because in theory, the force of these bands and these bands is going to add up. Just imagine a rifleman on a fast train, going very, very fast, and he shoots in front, just to the front of the train, at a target on the ground, just so that the target on the ground will face both the speed of the bullet and the speed of the train. And if he shoots to the back, then it actually slows down the speed of the bullet from the point of view of the still standing target. Now we see the weapon in cocked condition. You see the ball is behind this notch, and the whole sled with the crossbow is cocked back, and this is the trigger. And once it fires, it would shift the notch over this knock here, and it will be pushed upwards, getting a little vector upwards, so it will be pushed upwards a little bit, and then still moving forward, it will be launched, still accelerated, and um, then it will leave the pouch right here. And if the timing is perfectly right, it will leave the pouch when the acceleration of the sled is stopped by the block here. Now we will try to crony the results with and without the sled acceleration. Don't expect any record-breaking results because it's very cold today and this is not a weapon. This is just an experiment. The experiment will be successful if we see that the uh, results add up. Forty twenty-nine. Thirty-two eighty-four. So it did add a little over seven meters per second to the end result of the shot. What does this mean? Well, we have three vectors that are add up. We have one vector straight to the front from these bands here. We have another vector straight to the front from the sled. And they add up pretty much. And the sled is slow because the sled is heavy. So uh, the bands aren't very powerful, otherwise the, uh, the thing would break on impact. So um, that's probably only having about 8 meters per second. Adds up with the uh, 32 meters per second from the band here. So we're getting 40 meters per second. And there is a third vector, and that is upwards from the ramp here. That's why the ball is leaving high. So the three vectors add up to a uh, pretty fast forward and upwards motion. Pretty interesting physics experiment. And of course, this could be added. There could be another sled in a sled, so simultaneously, and you could stack this up. It would be ridiculous, of course. Now, would this be more powerful if I would just have one long band set? Probably, but there is one limit. Rubber only has a certain end speed. Now, there is one thing that you can do with this technology. You can shatter the maximum retraction speed of rubber, which is probably around 500 feet per second. You can't probably design a rubber-based launcher that can shatter the uh, speed of sound. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> anyway, it's an exception. I hope you like it because that's it for today. Thanks and bye-bye.